And then the one last issue with authentication that I'll mention is that when you sign in, the cookie will be set to expire after two hours. And this is regardless of the activity that you might have. So what I mean by that is let's say I'm signed in, I'm going to run a query, let's say on myself, so I'm just copy that query. If we run that query, it's not going to change the expiry date of the cookie. So note that at the moment, the cookie is set to expire around 12.59, 22 seconds. So if I run the query again, you'll see that the cookie will expire at that same exact time. And this might be problematic if the user is using the system, but they're being locked out after two hours, even though they're still active on the website. So once again, this is coming back to the discussion we had earlier about the expiration time of the cookie. So if you look at the config file, by default, it's set to two hours. And I think that time frame makes sense, but only in the use case when the session is being extended, when the user makes queries or otherwise makes mutations to the system. If the cookie is set to expire after a fixed time frame, so in this case two hours, I think it would make sense to bump that time frame to let's say a day. And once again, it really depends on the application and how it's set to function, of course. But I think what we're gonna do for this application in particular, we're gonna keep the session lifetime at two hours, but instead of making it fixed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our index file, not the directives, Let's go to use source slash index. And now inside of this file, we're gonna go back to our session declaration. And so what we're gonna do in this file is we're going to actually set resave to true. And so what resave is going to do is it's always going to persist the session back to the store. And this will happen even if the session wasn't modified. So even if you didn't do, let's say, request that session, even if you didn't put, let's say the user ID or any other property on that session object. So we're always going to resave the session back to the store. And in fact, this makes sense to do because by the end of every request, the session middleware will actually touch the session store. So it's going to call store.touch method. What that function or method is going to do is it's basically going to bump the expiration time of the cookie. Now it's not going to save it, it's actually going to only bump the time to live property in Redis. And this is in case of using Redis, of course, because we're using Redis for sessions. And because the time to live is already being bumped up and there's no way to opt out of that behavior, what we're gonna do is we're gonna call session.save and this will basically persist the session to the store. That call is being controlled by the resave property. And so once the session is being saved to the store, its lifetime is going to be extended because the expiry date is going to be extended into the future. And because of that, we're gonna also set the rolling property to true. This will simply update the cookie. So it's gonna make sure that the cookie is synced up with the session server side. And if you haven't worked with the Session Express package, all the stuff I'm explaining might seem very cryptic and mysterious. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you by example. So let me actually go back to the browser. I'm going to sign out temporarily. So this will delete the cookie. So first of all, let's make sure we don't run into any issues. It seems like the server is running fine. And on the same note, I'm actually going to go back to this tab. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log into Redis. So let me call up Redis CLI. We're gonna pass in the host. I'm gonna grab it from the environment file. So I'll pass in the port and the password. So once I'm logged in, let's go back. We're gonna sign back in. So let's call the sign in mutation from this tab. So now we're signed in and we also get the cookie. Notice that it's set to expire at one hour, six minutes and 30 seconds in Eastern Standard Time. If I go back to the terminal, let's do scan zero. We're gonna see that session so what we can do is we can do a get on that session key. So this will give us the actual session object that is being serialized into JSON. And you're gonna see that it's gonna expire at six hours, six minutes and 30 seconds. This value once again is greater by five hours because it's in GMT or UTC. Now, if let's say I do a request with the me query, let's take a look at the session cookie. In this case, as you can see, it's bumped up to seven minutes and 43 seconds. And that's gonna happen every time I make a request to the server. So you can see once again, it went from 43 seconds to 51. So every time you make a request, it's gonna bump up the session cookie. So it's gonna extend the lifetime of the session. And the same thing is gonna happen, of course, in here. So if we do a get on that same session key, the same is gonna be reflected in the store. So now the session is going to expire at 
6 hours 7 minutes 51 seconds in GMT. Of course, if I make a subsequent request, that value will be popped up as well. So the reason that this is useful is it's going to allow you to basically extend your session indefinitely until it expires after two hours of inactivity. So if you're away from your computer for two hours, the session is going to expire and you're going to have to log back in. And on the same note, if you do the time to live command, it's going to give you the exact same thing, only in seconds. Now this one actually goes down every second. So as you can see, if I refetch that value, it's going to be decremented. Basically, it's a counter that tells when the session is going to expire. So now by the time it reaches a negative value, that means that the session is expired and the session will also be deleted from Redis. Now if that happens, if you try to request again from the server, this command will fail. And now on the browser side, when the expiration time for the cookie is being reached, the browser will delete that cookie. Of course, you could still copy that value. And in fact, you could make a curl request with a cookie header, but that value won't be accepted server side because by that time, if the session is expired, it will be deleted from the store. So you won't be able to authenticate against that same session. Anyways, I hope that clears things up. And once again, all that explanation really was about the resave property. So we're going to be resaving the sessions to the store on every request and we're also going to be rolling the cookie so we're going to be resetting the cookie on the response every time you ping the server anyways and that's going to be easier for us because we're going to be able to make requests to the server and also extend the lifetime so if, if we are active in the application if we're making requests or in the future we're also going to be subscribing to data changes if we are active with a session it makes sense to keep the session alive until we are inactive and after we're inactive, we're gonna set the expiry of two hours. Once that time is reached, we're gonna kick the user out of the session. Anyway, so I hope that makes sense. And once again, we refactored the application to use the auth and guest directives. So I hope that was useful and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think and I'm gonna see you next time. Take care.